Good morning. Oh, it's good to see you on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, great great grandmothers. And if there's a great 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 grandmother here, please stand <laughs> if you're able. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of our ladies and mother figures and mothers who have done so much to keep us knuckleheads in line. Today we are here to worship God, but we are also going to recognize you as our precious mothers today. And in order to begin that process, we've got some very special music from some very special folks. You guys come on up. Picking dandelions all day I burst through the front door When I gathered enough To give to my mom To show her my love And when I held out my hands She looked down at me She said I never seen flowers As beautiful as these She's satisfied with a 
Tissues are under the pews. <laughs> Mother's Day is such a special day. We recognize those mothers that we are blessed to still have with us, and we revel in remembering those who have gone on. So lots of reasons for tears of joy today. I know some of you are hurting in a lot of ways because Mama might not be right here. But boy, isn't it beautiful to know one day just one day we get to get that embrace again. But happy Mother's Day to all of you. A couple of announcements just to break the tension for a moment. Uh, today I do want to welcome you to Antioch. I know we've got some visitors. And if you are here today because you wanted to be with Mom and give her a special treat, God bless you. Because I can tell you this, I'm not a mother, but as a parent I can tell you, those mamas appreciate your presence here as much as any card or any gift you could have possibly given them. And they are just sitting there with grins from ear to ear because you made the time to be here with them today and celebrate Mother's Day. And the flip side of that is I see some mothers here today who showed up and came from their own home churches to be with their kids too. And the kids are grinning from ear to ear. So what a beautiful day as we remember moms. I do want to mention in that vein, you see some beautiful carnations up here. It is the official uh, flower of Mother's Day, and I'll talk a little bit about, about that in the sermon, but those were placed in memory and in honor today. If you placed one of those in memory or, or in honor, or if one was placed for you, check it out in the bulletin insert and take those with you. And we do know that a few of these inserts did not get placed in the bulletin. There are extras in the parlor if you'd like them, and we want to thank everybody who took the time to do that. Also, by way of quick announcements, we hope you will read the bulletin and see the rest of the announcements because we've got several special things today. So we're not going to read them all. But the first couple I do want to mention, tomorrow night, our seniors will be given a baccalaureate service, an opportunity for us, the church, to come around them, to pray for them, to recognize their achievements, and let them know that the church is still very much alive in Person County that we believe in the power of prayer and that part of the prayers we are praying are for them and their future and their uh, future choices and decisions they'll make. So please come out and be a part of this. This is sort of the offshoot of C3 that we began several years back to show these seniors that prayer still matters in this county. So tomorrow night, 6.30, Westwood Baptist Church, come on out and a couple of our very own will be speaking. It won't be a long service, but it will be a great opportunity to show these kids that we love them and we care. So come on out for that. And because of that, the men have canceled their Bible study for tomorrow night. Also, real quickly, I wanted to mention that we have taken a love offering last Sunday, and we'll be doing that again today. Those two families will re remain anonymous, but I can assure you of this. They are deserving of our help, very needing of, in our help. Uh, and so please today... Pray as to how God would direct you to give to them. That will be in the back and in the parlor as we exit today. Just give as the Lord leads you, and that money will be split right down the middle for these two families who have found themselves in pretty tough circumstances, no fault of their own, and they're trying so hard to work their way out of that. And finally, thank you for staying for the choral amen last week. Uh, I mentioned to you that choral amen that's at the end of the bulletin. That is part of worship, and I think we have that tendency because the preacher just won't shut up sometimes, and we're hungry, and we want to get out of here. We have that tendency to rush out the back door while the choir is singing that choral amen. What we want to do is help you understand that's part of service, part of our worship. So stand and sing it with them, and then when we get to the end, then make a mad rush for the door without trampling anybody. How about that? But thank you for helping with that. We'll continue to practice on that one. And finally, a card here that says a very special thank you. Every kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. It's sometimes easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others still today. Thanks for being such a special reminder in my life, Charles Hall. Charles says, thank you, Antioch family, for all the prayers, visits, calls, and food you shared with me during my recovery. It is so great to know that so many cared. And also thank you for the prayer shawl and the great thoughts it has given when you used it. It is, a gr it is great to know that a family cares so much. God bless you all and continue to pray for me as I continue to recover. As you know, Charles had a very traumatic accident a while back, but is doing well, thank the Lord. He just had his skin graft this week. Things are going good, but he wanted to say thank you and he loves you. 
All right, well, as far as announcements, I think we uh, want to hear a little bit about last night and maybe Honduras. So come on up, Eric. So before we honor mothers this morning, we're going to um, just have another special group of young people come up. Come up and you can line up up here if you're going to Honduras this, um, this summer or actually in like four weeks. So this year, there's a group of eight of us, um, myself and seven others. And out of the seven that are going this year, uh, four of them are returning, and we have three new ones that are joining us this year. So the fact that I've had um, some youth that have just come and, and gone and then want to go back and go back, it, I just think it just shows uh, the way the Holy Spirit and the way Jesus works within this trip, and it works in their lives. And again, I cannot encourage you any more than I know how, church, is to get involved um, and support them, but also uh, just ask the Lord if he's leading you to Honduras. Uh, we'd love to go. It's not just primarily a youth trip. Um, I would gladly take some adult support with us, so look towards that next year. But we have Colton um, Slaughter. He, this is his third year going. Um, Hunter Williams, who will be, this is his first trip. Audrey Connor, who's, this will be her first trip. Um, Ashley Whitlow is her second year. Victoria Phelps is her second year. Stephanie Griffith, which is her second year, and then Maddie Keaton is on her first year. Um, these young people have a heart for the gospel. They have a heart for missions, and they are excited about taking uh, the news of Jesus Christ in the Honduras. And we just want to get up this morning just, just to, to put a face uh, to the names that maybe you have seen or maybe you didn't really know who was going this year. And we just all want, all want to say a collective thank you. So, guys, thank you. Collective thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Whew, see, I need some more adult help. Come on now. Um, especially for last night. Um, we did a talent show. We did a pancake dinner and, and auction fundraiser. And we raised probably at least $2,500, if not more. I've gotten several checks today. Uh, so we just thank you, church. Thank you for the ones that came out. Thank you for the ones that have been praying for us. Thank you to the ones that have put donations in the plate, um, whether it was last night or, or previous to this. So we just want to give you guys a hand for that. But... These guys have about a one-week turnaround after they get done with school, and then we leave for Honduras. So we're leaving in the middle of June, and we just ask that you continue to pray for us, um, hug their necks, tell them that, um, that you're praying for them, that you love them, and that you care about them. A couple of them are still looking um, for a little bit more financial support, so if you, if you feel led to give, feel free to do that. Uh, but, but most of all, just wrap your arms around them as the church, as a body of believers, and love on them, and pray for them, and encourage them. And again, see if the Lord is leading you towards that way as well. Thank you again. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. My Honduras team are going to put you to work right now, so just hang tight. It is Mother's Day, if I haven't said that a million times already. And as we do each year, we have a very special gift for each of our mothers, grandmothers. And, well, I guess, you know, if you're getting it as a grandmother, you're getting it as a mother too, right? I don't know. Also, for our mother figures, we recognize here at Antioch, that some of you ladies may not have children, but you are mama and a lot of people, and a lot of people need that. So this morning, we would like for you to stand, all of our moms, grandmoms, mother figures, stand this morning for us so that we can see you juggernauts, you servants of the Lord, those of you who keep us going day in and day out. Give these ladies a hand, y'all. All right, now I want you to remain standing because you're already there and uncomfortable, so just remain standing. And we have a gift for you this year. This year we wanted to do something just a bit different, so we got you not a bookmark, but four. They're connected, and you're thinking, oh, whoopee, a bookmark. No, listen, it's for your Bibles or the books you may be reading, and they deal with things such as joy, courage, peace, and faith. And you ladies represent and bring that into all our lives. And so read these verses that we've placed on these for you. And on the back it says, Woman of God. And it's journeying into faith. And so we have these for you. Please remain standing until you get one of these. And guys, there are two baskets. Grab a handful and make sure all these ladies who are standing get one of those. Now once you get one, you may be seated. Hunter, come on up to the choir, buddy. We don't want to leave these ladies out back here.
right as those ladies take those over to overflow to take care of our mothers grandmothers and such over there let's give these moms just one more thank you god bless you all and now let's have a prayer for our moms for all of those who are here today and for our services to follow father god we are so grateful for this day thank you for all that we've already experienced Father, we thank you for mothers. For some today, it's so very difficult, God. We understand that. But what a joy to know that those who have left us in you are looking down. They are waiting on us. We're so grateful, God, that nothing can separate a mother's love. Nothing, not even death. And I pray that you would minister to the hearts who deal with that pain today, but help them to find joy in the midst of it. For the rest, God, I just pray that you would help them to take the time to love on their mothers, those who have been mother figures in their lives, precious grandmothers and beyond. What will we do without these ladies that you have given to nurture us, to teach us, to help us along in our walk? And Father, as the song said this morning, they deserve so much but accept so little. And so today, help us to shower them with love in every way possible and make every moment with them count. Bless this day. Otherwise, God, as we go into worship, I pray that our worship would be pure, and even though we're focusing on mamas, we are thankful that we get to focus on you and what you're doing through them. We get to focus on who you are and how you are the greatest parent we could ever imagine. <laughs> Father, bless this day. Bless this Honduras group, God. They are prepared to step away from familiarity and to go into a strange place and serve people in your name, to be your hands and feet, to love on them in a very special way. And I pray that you provide them every single thing that they need. Be with Eric as he leads this trip and help him to be the guide, that confidant these young people need as they go. Thank you for the blessing of last night, for all the talent that our youth displayed and were willing to share in your name. And thank you for the benevolent hearts that gave last night for this trip. We also now pray towards the love offering, God. We pray that you would lay on people's heart to give. But Lord, I know some folks just don't have it to give. They're in need too, so I pray that you'd bless them all. But for the rest of our time together, help us to truly worship in a way that pleases you, that glorifies you, and help us to leave here as a people who have been blessed and will continue to be a blessing in your eyes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, time to dismiss for Children's Church. So hug on Mama, give her a kiss, and go to Children's Church. Hey, you didn't kiss Mama. Have fun, learn a lot. Continue worship now with the offertory hymn, Love Lifted Me, on page 546. Stand if you're able.
Andrew, have our prayer. Lord, I just pray for this wonderful day for giving us and pray for all the mothers. Uh, pray that we take these messages to heart. Amen. Amen. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for saving me. When I was eight years old, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I can recall that night. And as I walked up that aisle, you know, I kind of got stopped in the middle because my father stopped me. And I guess he thought I was kind of getting out of line because he has six kids. <laughs> and he was probably figuring out, well, I got one of them. What is she doing? And that particular night, he allowed me to, um, I mean, he allowed me to sit with one of my friends in the back. And so I did that. And the Lord just la led me to, to step at it at the age of eight. And what a wonderful decision I made on that day. And I pray as I sing the song that you will reflect on the time that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> oh no, the old story will never grow old. How Jesus died to save my soul. Oh no, the old story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. Well, I went to church one lonely night. I sat way back, for my soul was not right. The preacher was preaching how Jesus died for a sin-filled world. He gave up his life. Oh no, the old story will never grow old. How Jesus died to save my soul. Oh no, the old story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. So I went to the altar, I knelt down in prayer. I asked for God's mercy, well, he pardoned me there. He lifted my burden, brought peace to my soul, and what made my life new was that story so old. Oh, no, the old story will never grow old. How Jesus died to save my soul. Oh, no, the old story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. Many years have passed by now since I found the Lord. I remember that night when the story was told. Time has no hold on the message it brings. Why, that story's so old, but it's still blessing me. Oh, no, the old story will never grow old. How Jesus died to save my soul. Oh, no, the old story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. That story, it'll never grow.
special women who are and have been a part of our Antioch music ministry. All these ladies passed along the gift of music to their daughters and at one time or another have all sang together in our choir. Although we're honoring all mothers and mother figures today, we pay special tribute to these five amazing gifted women. Jenny Lou Rogers, Betty Barton, Emma Jean Carver, June Bowes, and Gail Long. Thank you all for sharing the gift of music with your children. These songs are favorites of all of them. Did I mention it was Mother's Day? <laughs> I got to tell you, we're recognizing mothers, but I have to recognize Ivan for a second. 
Ivan. <laughs> Ivan, I appreciate that. I was sitting here last night at the fundraiser right here on the, on the little step on the side, and Sam Newson came up, and he got on my back, as he always does, and he started rubbing my head, and almost like it was an epiphany, he said, Hey, you got hair again. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, I haven't started using Rogaine. It doesn't work. Um, but I have been standing in front of Ivan Price right there in the choir, and as he sings those notes, my follicles are stimulated. <laughs> And as if by miracle, hair burst forth, and Sam noticed last night. You know, some people are just gifted and talented, and I love Ivan, but he's made me never want to sing again. But, um, but thank you, choir, and what a wonderful group of ladies that was in memory and honor, well, in honor of, and uh, we are grateful for them and all our mothers. And today is being, having been Mother's Day, I woke up this morning and I, I'm a good husband the best I can be. I know I'm a knucklehead sometimes and Missy would agree. She's back there saying amen right now. But I try to be a, a good husband and a good daddy. And, and so I did what I've been doing forever now, for 17 years it seems like. And I got her a Mother's Day card to make sure she got a Mother's Day card and made sure she got a gift. I had that there on the counter. But my boys, <laughs> touches my heart. My boys made sure they got her one too this year. Amen. Not really with my prompting. They just wanted to do that for their mama. So they've got this really long, serious one from Blue Mountain Arts that just, it just goes on and on and on. It's page after page after page. And, and then Micah wrote his own and he put it there. And Micah got his little Lego figures and made our family. There was me. No hair. There, there, there's, there, I had a hat on. Thank you. Protecting me from the sun. And then there's Noah and Mom, and then there's Micah with red hair, and then there's a little bouquet of Lego flowers there. So they had set all this up, and Micah had written a song for his mama in the card there. But one of the things that I read in the card just really touched me. It said, God has given you the power to be the best mommy in the world. And I had to thinking about that thing. Out of the mouth of babes. And son, I know you're almost 12 years old now. You're not a baby. But out of the mouth of babes, from children come such profound truth. You know, we're recognizing you ladies today. But we also recognize the fact that it's God that has empowered you to be the superheroes that you are. He gave you those powers. Micah recognized it. And I began to think along those lines this morning over breakfast. And I thought, you know, moms really do have superpowers. They really are superheroes. You know, I think of some about the, those powers, and here are some of them I just jotted down. Moms have the power and ability to make two plates in the buffet line and somehow keep their kids nearby. Have y'all ever watched that? <laughs> They're making two plates, and the kid, they got them with the knee. I, 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 can't, I can't even do it, but they can somehow just sort of hang on to them and keep moving them down the line and fixing their meals, two plates at a time. And I'm amazed at that superpower. They have the ability to function on about 45 minutes of sleep a night because there have been times when I've watched my wife just get just not even an hour or so of sleep and continue to go as the juggernaut she is. The ability to hold down full-time jobs while still managing us meathead husbands and the kids and the household. That's a superpower. Try it sometimes, fellas. We got some Mr. Moms in here, but you ain't good as the ladies. I'm just going to tell you. You try. You do good, but these ladies are amazing. It's a superpower. Able to hold a kid in one arm while doing almost anything else on the planet. I, that blows me away. Now, fellas, you know we were just created different. And I, ladies, I might be getting in trouble here, but God just made y'all where that hip is like a seat. And, and the kid just sort of plants there, and you've got them by one arm and regularly doing everything else. I've seen Missy washing dishes and reading the Bible, doing devotions, throwing laundry in the washer and dryer, pulling it out, folding it one-handed, and then she'd switch hips and go start doing it with the other. It's just amazing. They're ambidextrous and able to do anything with just one hand. They also have that superpower where they're able to make and serve warm bottles and change nasty diapers while they're still asleep. I've witnessed it. It's amazing. It is amazing. Able to read us their husbands and children like a book. You ain't get, let me just tell y'all something. Young people and husbands, you're not getting away with anything. If you feel like you are, it's because they want you to feel that way, and you better watch out. 
They know. They know their families. They know their husbands, and they know their young ones. And I'm telling you, you ain't getting away with nothing. So just know they've got that superpower. They have this other ability, which uh, we've experienced here. Some of the youth that came through our youth program, uh, and they're going to be like, yeah, I remember that. You know they have the power of the death stare. How many of you who are now adults were once in the youth program here got the death stare from Missy Chambers? Would you please raise your hand? Look at him. Look at him. Yeah. Now, y'all think she is absolutely the sweetest thing on the planet, and I agree. But I'm telling you, you better be holding the line in God's house because if she gets that stare on you, it burns. It burns. And and there's no linocaine, lanocaine, no aloe, no nothing makes it feel better. And, And while you're sitting there grinning, Robert, I know you have uh, been burnt several times by your wife. Because if there's anybody that ever mastered the death stare, it's Cindy O'Brien. But that is a superpower that will stop you in your tracks. Yeah, another one over here. I got you. And that's not their only superpower. The one that has always amazed me the most is their super saliva. Let me tell you something. They can put just a drop on that thumb and wipe anything on the planet off. 409 and Goo Gone ain't got nothing on Mama Saliva. And that is the most embarrassing thing if you've ever been a part of it. I still get a part of that sometimes. Missy will walk up and I'm like, no, no, no. I'll tell you this though, it'll get y'all's ladies makeup off my lapel every time. But boy, aren't mamas superheroes? We say this in life, but these things are true. They're superheroes. They can do things that we just can't do, guys. We, just, we try our best to be nurturing and loving, but mamas, mamas are good at it. They're superheroes. And that is a perfect segue into today's message entitled, A Mama is a Man. <laughs> y'all mean y'all hadn't looked at the bulletin yet? Yeah. It's, it's not a misprint. A mom is a man. Now, this is not some of that new age junk that's running around where you get to decide what you're going to be. This is just a fact. A real mom is a man, and I'm going to prove it to you because it's right here in the passage you're going to read, and we're going to pick up right where we left off in Ruth, chapter 4, verse 16. As I'm leading up to this, though, i got to tell you, it was so perfect. I always get good illustrations right before I preach a message. I was riding down 501, headed to the hospital the other day, to see Jenny Lou Rogers. Jenny Lou's in the hospital. Y'all pray for her. She will be 98 years old in two weeks. And I'm telling you, still just as sharp as attack in a lot of ways. She may not remember things that happened this morning, but she can tell you a lot of what's happening over the history of her life, and she's still one incredible lady. But pray for her. But I was going over to see her, and I get behind this little car, and it's like been written all over with that chalk or paint or whatever people write on your cars with, and it says, World's Greatest Woman. Wonderful mom, greatest lady on the planet. Stuff like this written all over it. So I'm a treat. So I speed up a little bit so I could get up beside him and see. And there at the driver's door, there was this double-lined heart and a guy sitting right in the middle of it with a beard down to here. I was like, Lord, I was just joking about a mom as a man. Good grief. But I assumed that he had taken this to do this with his kids and then take it to his wife. At least I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he did not look like the greatest woman on the planet to me. (laughs) Nonetheless, if it was, she needs to shave. But nonetheless, I would submit to you, though, that the title of this message is 100% true. And I want you to take it out of here today and tell them, my preacher told me today that a mom is a man and that any mom that's not a man is not worth being a mom. Because I'm telling you, that's the truth. We've been going through the book of Ruth, and I'm not going to do the whole recap today, but it's an incredible love story set in a very difficult time in the history of Israel. What's happening is that this family is in dire straits. The dad has died. The two husbands have died. So you got a mom-in-law and two daughters-in-law who are trying to figure out how to make it. One stays back in Moab. The other two go back to Jerusalem. As they get there, they're trying to figure out how in the world are we going to get by? In those days, as women, you didn't have a lot of means unless there was somebody to come alongside you and help take care of you. And they were in desperate need. And all of a sudden, God brings into their life a man named Boaz. No coincidence. It was a godsidence. God is looking after his children just like he always has, just like he always will. If you are in a tough situation right now, hang on. 
Hang on, because God hasn't quit. He's not taking a break. He's just doing things in his own time. And in the perfect time, he brings Boaz, a man who was a man of means, a man of, of worth, a man of character, and a man who knew God right into their lives. They end up falling in love, this man Boaz, this woman Ruth. And as this happens, Naomi, the mother-in-law, is taken care of too, and they find out, man, this is a beautiful story unfolding before their eyes. They get hitched, they get married, as people in love often do, and then they have their honeymoon, and what comes of the honeymoon? A baby. It's just what happens when you have sex. Most of the time, a baby will come unless you're trying to prevent it somehow. And so they have a baby. And last week, we transitioned from Boaz being that redeemer and looking after Naomi and looking after Ruth and giving them that kinsman's redeemer. They tra sort of transition into the baby being that so that in their older age that that baby's going to be there too. His name is Obed. It means servant. But as this baby is born in this one little verse, we see where we will springboard for the rest of our message. And it simply says this, And Naomi, here's the grandma, took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. What a beautiful and yet so simple passage. So how in the world can you get a message out of that? This tells me that a mom is a man and a grandma is a man. Uh, you say, no, it doesn't. That she took the baby, pretty much laid it in her lap, was holding on to this baby as we do. How many of you love to hold a baby? I do. I just love a little baby and the smell of a baby and the softness of a baby, and then I'm ready to give it right back to the mamas. But, but this, this grandma, if you're a grandma or a mama, you think about that. I'll never forget the look on Missy's face when she had Noah. Yeah, it's been a long time now, 17 half years, almost 18 years, and she had gone through immense pain. We didn't get there in time for any real painkiller. She didn't get any epidural or anything. She just had a baby. And I'll tell you, I, have, I heard her sing notes that she does not sing any longer in the <laughs> choir. And, and I was wearing a ring. You've heard this story. I was wearing a ring that had my name in it, a class ring. She bruised it into my pinky. She was squeezing my hand so hard. And every time I tell that story, she was like, oh, wah. <laughs> I, I had a baby. You got a bruise. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But you could tell she was just in agony. It was hard. If you had a baby, I mean, I, don't, I can't speak to this. But th it, by the way, guys, let me just help you out. When you go to ER, don't never tell them you're in a, a level 10 pain. That's reserved for women having babies. And if a woman's there having a baby and hears you say you're in a 10, she's coming after you. Don't do it. <laughs> but excruciating pain, excruciating. But the minute that baby was delivered and that doctor laid him on her chest, she looked like the happiest woman on the face of the planet. She did that with both our babies. She just held them close. Just held them and did nothing but love them. In this passage, that's what Naomi's doing. This baby's just been born. This baby, Obed. Here was a lady who had lost both her sons and now new life has been handed to her. Can you imagine the feeling she was loving that child, holding on to that child, thinking, man, I'm going to spoil him rotten. I can't wait. This is my grandbaby. And as we read last week, not only would Boaz be her kinsman's redeemer, but Obed would come in. He would be the one that would help her through her old age and look after her, which, by the way, is uh, the Scripture tipping its hand to the fact that we need to look after those as they have gotten older. Don't give up on them. They are still priceless in every way. But she grabs this baby, she's holding it to her chest, and it says she became nurse unto it. Now, I've heard preachers preach this terribly incorrectly, and I'm not picking on anybody, but you've got to do your research. It looks like it's saying that she became a nursemaid to this baby or a wet nurse, and she began to breastfeed the baby if you read it on the surface. Not what happened. There was nothing wrong with Ruth. We have no reason to believe that Ruth didn't feed her own baby. What that word is, is a man. It says she took the child into her bosom, into her chest, and she wrapped it up real tight, and she became a man to it. And you're like, huh? Yeah, that's the Hebrew word. <coughs> she became a man. So a mom is a man. A grandma is a man, and here's why. A man in Hebrew means nurturer, supporter, provider for, lover of. So I know from a fact, from my own personal experience, that a mom is a man. I am blessed. I stand before you today, mother-in-laws mother included, with four moms. 
Now, that makes Mother's Day weekend real interesting. But I'll tell you, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful for that. And in each of their lives, in their own way, they have nurtured us. They have supported us, provided for us, and loved on us. And I know for you and your moms and your mother figures and your grandmothers, I know they did the same. And that's what a mom's supposed to be, a man, but only a man in the Hebrew. And so we find here that Naomi was a good grandma. And I tell you, there's nothing like a grandma or a mother. That's why they're called grandmothers and mothers. It's something special. So as we look at this, I would submit to you that all of us, all of you ladies, should be a man. Loving, nurturing, growing up real men and women of God. Now, did you hear that? Real men and women of God. Giving us and your children what they need, not what they want. Now, if they happen to coincide and be the same thing, that's okay. But I think what we're witnessing today, what a lot of you are seeing, and as soon as I get it out of my mouth, a lot of you are going to be nodding your heads. I think we're witnessing a world today where moms and dads are giving our children every single thing they want, even if it's not good for them. And moms, I'm going to tell you, it's time for you to step up and do more of what we know to be right. Giving our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the children around us that which they need rather than what they want. I've said it almost every Father's Day, every Mother's Day for years now, but I mean it and it's the truth. You were not called by God to be your children's friend. You were called to be their parent. And it's time that parents stepped up and realized that if you will be their parent first, that friend thing comes naturally. I have found that as we are consistent with our children, as we say no and give them boundaries where they're supposed to have boundaries, that not only do they deal with it and get over their pouting and silliness, they appreciate the boundaries because they like to know how far can I go before I'm in trouble. They appreciate the consistency. They know that they're not going to get over on daddy because they're going to go to mama and get something different and vice versa. We're united in the raising of these kids and we understand that even though we're not super parents, that we have got to pick this thing up and see what does this say they need and give them this rather than what they think they want because we know what they do not. <coughs> now, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I'll never forget t counseling a lady one time. She was struggling. Struggling because she just couldn't understand why her prayers for this specific thing weren't being answered. She'd been praying forever and ever and ever, and she said, God ain't listening. And I said, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, you, well, he ain't answering. I said, he ain't answering yet. Or maybe his answer was no. That's still an answer, ain't it? As parents, that's okay. No never killed nobody. It didn't. But I told her, I said, it's just not true. Either he's saying no is your answer, or he's saying wait. She couldn't get it. I said, well, let me ask you this. Do you love your daughter? And we'll just call her daughter Jane today, just for argument's sake. That's not her daughter's name. But she said, I said, do you love your daughter Jane? She said, of course I do. I said, do you really love your daughter? She was like, yes, of course I do. Like, how ridiculous can you be? I said, well, I just want to make sure. Let me ask you this. If that daughter asks you for a venomous black mamba snake as a pet that she could play with on a regular basis, get her hands on, fiddle with, would you give her that black mamba snake? No, that's just stupid, Pastor Dave. I said, so is what you're asking for in God's eyes if he chooses not to answer it or decides to give you something different. I said, my point is this. Maybe what you're asking for isn't stupid, but God probably knows that it might not be what you need and it's too dangerous for you right now or whatever the case may be. So God's going to give you what you need not what you want. And if we as parents, as fathers and ladies today, as we focus on you, as mothers are going to be true godly mothers, Christians, which means like Christ, little Christ, aren't we going to do the same for our kids? We need to give them what they need, not what they want, unless it's the same thing. And I'll tell you, the more you give them what they need, what they want will become what they need. I've witnessed in a lot of lives. How do we do that, though? Well, you do it like Naomi. Naomi had the picture here. She started off right. We don't know how Naomi finished up with the grandbaby because the narrative sort of ends in another week or so as we get through these last few verses. We really don't know. But what we do know is she started right. She grabbed that baby, loved on that baby, and she became a man to it. 
And the Hebrew meaning a provider, a nurturer, a lover of. I'll tell you what, moms, all you got to do is really love your youngins and you're on the right track. Remember, love isn't nice, love's kind. It's going to do what's right in every instance and it's always going to be there. It's going to be consistent. You know, I was thinking about earlier, I told you that the carnation is the official flower of Mother's Day, has been for a long, long time in America. And, and it, that's why we get them here every year. It's a tradition, but it's the official flower. But it was chosen for this purpose. Do you know that the carnation is one of the few flowers on the planet that never sheds a petal? You ever thought about that? You think about a rose. You keep it long enough, it's going to start looking pretty ugly and it's going to start dropping things all over. There was a beautiful arrangement in the uh, fellowship hall as I came in this morning, and it was so beautiful when we left last night. Come in, and overnight I looked, and the table was covered with these beautiful little purple petals and flowers that had fallen off. Not going to happen to these carnations. Oh, they'll wither, but what happens with a carnation is that they begin to close in. And the reason that was chosen for Mother's Day is it represented a love that just even as it started heading towards death, it never lost that ability to draw something in closer to its heart and hold it close and love on it to the very end. So moms, as you take these carnations home today, know that somebody thought that of you. They know that you're going to love them to the end. Please do so. But Naomi, she was a carnation in her own time. And how about like Hannah? You know, I got to thinking about Hannah too. We talk about Hannah oftentimes at, at Mother's Day, but... That's how you can do this, right? Like Naomi, just grab the youngins and love on them. But how? By recognizing in their life what matters most. Hannah was a lady who was married to a man named Elkanah. She couldn't have any children. She was barren for the longest time. And in those days, there was a real enigma around that. It was a tough thing to be a woman that couldn't provide a child in that culture. And she was torn up about it. But she didn't moan and groan. She just went to the temple and she prayed. So moms, I'm just going to tell you, problems are coming in your young'un's lives. They're coming in yours. But like Hannah, good mothers can step up and recognize the problems either coming down the pipes or the ones that face them right face to face, and they can do the one thing that really will fix it. You see, I love this thing about mothers. Guys, we are fixers most of the time. We just want to figure out how to fix it, and a lot of times we royally mess up because we don't do what moms tend to default to, prayer. Hannah recognized an issue, a problem. She wanted to be a mama, something fierce. So she started to pray about it. She prayed and she prayed and she never gave up on the thought that God might answer her prayer. But she also recognized that if she got a baby, there was something she needed to do. She said, if I get a child, I promise you I will dedicate him back to you. We do baby dedications around here for that very reason. These mamas, grandmas, grandpas, they have these children in their lives and they want to come publicly and say, listen, we want to raise this child in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We want to dedicate this child to the Lord. That is in no way saying that child got saved at that point. Child has no clue about salvation. It's why we don't do infant baptism. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that? The child doesn't understand what salvation is and baptism is a symbolism of that. But that's another story for another day. We do the dedications to show that the family wants to dedicate that baby back to the Lord. A good mama will always do that. Daily, please take your children to God. And that's what she did. And boy, she took this thing to extremes. Verse 11, after she got this baby named Samuel, she has this baby in verse 11. She said, you know what? I'm going to give him to you. If you give him to me, I'll give him back to you all the days of his life. And she won't play him. As I read verse 27 of 1 Samuel one, it says this, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him, or granted him, or given him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, shall he be given to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Let me tell you how serious this mama was about dedicating her baby to the Lord. She prayed it. She got him. She nurtured him for about three years. She was a man in his life, as we were talking about from the hero, Hebrew. And she took him to the temple and gave him over to Eli to raise him. Whew. How many of you mothers could do that? Isn't it beautiful? God has not asked you to do such a thing. But he has asked you to dedicate and give your children to the Lord. And you can do that on your knees every single day. And you must. 
Why? Because I'll tell you, there is an enemy out there that's trying to snatch your kids out from under you left and right. Trying to put anything in the world he can think of in front of them to pull them away from God. Dedicate those children. Pray for them to the Lord each and every day. That's how you do it. She gave God the glory for that blessing and she gave him back. We need to do it regularly. And the final thing I wanted to add to it is almost like miracle grow. Most of you feed your children, right? I mean, y'all feed your kids once a day at least? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It Carrie's mom picks on us. She's like, uh, we don't feed her on Tuesday nights. That's not her night to eat. She's joking, but you know, it really brings to light something that you ladies do an incredible job at. Now, this is not to say anything bad about the fathers. Y'all are good cooks. You're the grill masters. I get it. But the mamas are the ones that typically carry the burden of making sure there's food going in the pie hole, right? And without it, what would happen? <coughs> Croak. You sort of got to have fuel to keep going, right? So I am real thankful for my mamas who fed me, for my Aunt Sandra. Who, Aunt Sandra's like a mama to me, too. She fed me like almost every day this week. She brought sourdough bread and, and man, and, and like breakfast pizza. I love it when people take time to feed you. Mamas are good at that, right? Well, there's something else you need to be feeding them too because you can keep something alive. That's just raising it. You, you can raise a chicken by throwing food. I, I see it all the time, but you need to nurture it. You need to take it the extra step. They need miracle grow, your kids. And your husbands, by the way. <laughs> keep throwing it at us too. Here lately, Missy's been getting into this miracle grow thing. She's developing her green thumb and our backyard is now starting to look like an oasis because like every week now, she goes and makes this blue Smurf-colored fluid with miracle Grow, and she's pouring it all over everything. And I'm like, good Lord, we're going to be overtaken. It's like the jungle back here. But that stuff works. And I'm going to tell you something. Rather than just feeding your youngins the food they need to be raised, we need to see you as mothers continually. And guys, you need to do it too. But you need to get out the miracle Grow, And you know where it's at? It's right there. That's the one thing your kids need more than anything else in this world because it's the one thing that's stable and solid and will never change, and that is the Word of God. That's the miracle grow. And I could not help but to think about Lois and Eunice in the Bible. This is Timothy's mom and grandma. And Paul is talking about them in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy 1.5, this is what Paul says to Timothy. He says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith or the genuine faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it's in thee also for this cause. What Paul is saying to Timothy, and Timothy was an amazing young man. Here's a young man that gave his life over to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he made a huge difference. Read some of the history of the early church. This man was amazing. And he was a protege of Paul. But Paul understood. He said, when I think about you, Timothy, and what an incredible young man you are, I know there's at least two reasons for that. And that's your grandma and your mama, Lois and Eunice. He said, I recall that it was in them first, and they gave it to you. Moms, grandmas, please give us the miracle grow. Please shower your children and grandchildren with the miracle grow. Make sure that first it's in you and that you are godly in every way. That you understand the word of God and then give it to them. See, I know that that's what they were given, Timothy, because as I move over to 2 Timothy 3, and I begin to look at some of these other verses, it says, from a child, 2 Timothy 3, 15, from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Lois and Eunice were throwing the miracle grow to this kid, and look at what it yielded. He says, you've known the Scriptures since you were a kid. When do you start reading the Scriptures to your youngins? While they're still in that belly. Don't tell me they can't get it. Start pouring it into them the very moment of conception, if you happen to know when that is. Another story. Don't nobody say nothing. <laughs> Love on them babies. Love on them with the word of God. Start pouring the milk will grow on them. That vitamin of life right out of the bat. He says, I know you knew it from the very beginning. And it's able to make you wise unto salvation. Do you pray for your children's salvation? God, I hope so. It's the most important thing. It's the most important choice they'll ever make. 
Because they can do everything else right in life, but if they have not bowed a knee to Jesus Christ, then you have failed with the one thing that mattered most because they will step off into eternity into a very real hell that God does not want them to go to. What a huge responsibility we have as parents, you as mothers, to instill in them the Word of God which makes them wise unto salvation. And not only that, it goes on to say all Scripture. Give it all to them. From Genesis to Revelation, give them every bit of it because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. This whole thing is God's plan and Word to mankind. Preach the whole counsel to them. I'll tell you, there are a lot of preachers around this world this day and time that will not preach the tough stuff because they just don't want to deal with the fallout or people being mad at them. I told a dear sister the other night, I said, I'm going to tell you, I don't have that luxury because I'd rather the whole world be mad at me and the church run me out on a rail than God to be upset because I skipped over something. Mothers don't skip over anything. It says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man and woman of God may be perfectly and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You want your children to be successful, don't you? Do you want your children to be, your grandchildren to be successful? Then you need to read this. It says this is what will give them that opportunity. It will furnish them unto all good works. I've said this before. I'll say it again. This book is what's right, what's not right, how to get right, and how to stay right. And if you're giving them anything else, you're doing it wrong. So moms, time for y'all to step up and be a man in the Hebrew sense. Go tell people that. As a mom, I'm a man. And in the Hebrew, that means I'm a nurturer. It means I love them with all my heart. I'm going to give them what they need, not what they want. And what they need is genuine love that says the Word of God is what matters most. I want them to come to know salvation and the Word makes them wise unto it. I want them to come to know what's right. I want them to know what's not right. I want them to know how to stay right after they've gotten right. I'm going to give them what matters most. Moms, you are more appreciated than you could ever know. And I already know today I'm preaching to the choir. Because you moms and grandmas, you've already done that. You mother figures, you've already done that in our lives. That's why we're here. Because you led us to God, to His Word, and to His church. But don't stop now. Don't stop now. You have superpowers beyond your belief. And not just the silly ones I listed this morning. You as mothers and grandmothers and as, as ladies of influence, you can bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and make them eternal and be guaranteed their success no matter what happens to them in this life. Thank you for what you've done, and I beg you to keep doing it. Ladies, a real mom is a man. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this day and for these people. Thank you that they have sat and patiently listened as we talked about, maybe a silly title, but the truth that a mom is a man. Not a man in the sense of gender, but a man in the sense of the Hebrew word of a genuine nurturer, like Naomi, who loved, who loved that grandbaby Obed, who recognized that he was something special, as all life is. Recognized that he would be there to nurture her in her old age, but she wanted to start it out. And Lord, I am certain like every grandmother and every mother, Naomi and Ruth wanted to spoil that baby. But I'll bet you, God, based on their character, they understood the difference between spoiling them and spoiling them rotten. God, may our mothers and may we as fathers spoil our children by loving on them and giving them what they really need, but not make them rotten by giving them what they want. I pray that we would instill in our children the Word of God, Your Word that is able to make them wise into salvation and to keep them on track for blessings and success throughout eternity. As mothers, as fathers, help us not to be so focused on the here and now as we are on the hereafter. And once that's settled, then we can start working on a promise in here and now. Bless these mothers, these grandmothers, and these ladies for what they mean to us and all they've done. Give them strength to keep doing it. As Micah said, we know it's you that gives them the power and these superpowers to be the moms they are. Bless them, Lord, with more and more of that because we need it. Us fellows need a lot of extra attention and I pray that you give these ladies endurance and patience and the power to do it. Thank you for how they've led us and I pray, God, that they would continue to do so. And, Lord, I know that on Mother's Day that it's not just that things like this that's on people's minds. I know that you have talked to people this week about their eternal security and their salvation. 
If that be the case, help them to move today. Maybe you've talked to them about church membership or other things. During this invitation, help us all to be obedient, to be who you called us to be. And I pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Invitation hymn at page 282. If you're able to stand, please do so as we sing this morning. And just respond this morning however the Lord leads you. If nothing else, just thank the Lord for Mama. If nothing else, pray as a mom to be the very best one you can be. Fellas, pray for these ladies as they do that. And whatever else God puts on your heart.
second. I know I've already seen people rolling out the back door trying to get to mama's. I will not keep you long, but we have an important business to attend to. I'm going to start over here on my left. Ty Brady, y'all come on over here. This is a Mother's Day that Dana Blackwell will never forget, nor will Jody, because I got to tell you, this is the coolest story. This is Brady. This is Ty. The other night at the ball game, Ty caught me. And by the way, Coach, I'm sorry I forgot. Make-up game 6.30 Thursday night for the <laughs> softball team. But uh, Ty came to me. I need to talk. And this is just the coolest kid, I'm telling you. He and his brother are just awesome kids. But anyway, we need to talk. So we walk around. There's people walking by us just left and right. And he starts in, I want Jesus in my heart. Now, he's been raised in a home where Jesus has been spoken fluently since the day he started breathing. And he's been coming to this church ever since he was a little bitty fella and teaching the teachers a thing or two here and there. But I'll tell you... He is an amazing young man. We talked about who Jesus was, who he was not, what he did, to make sure he understood. Because How old are you, Ty? Seven. He's seven years old. That's how old I was when I got saved. And you want to make sure at seven that they get it, that they don't come back 20, 30 years later and say, you know, I did it, but I really didn't understand. If he don't understand, then I don't either. In his own childlike faith, he explained the gospel to me and what Jesus had done for him. And he said, I want him right here. And he, he prayed right there with me that night. He didn't want to wait to come here. He prayed with me that night right there at the ball field with people everywhere to receive Christ into his heart. You know, I love that. You don't have to come to an altar. God's everywhere. He'll meet you where, where you want to meet him. So Ty accepted Christ into his heart that night, prayed that sinner's prayer. But more than just praying a prayer, I think it was a genuine desire to walk with the Lord. And so I'm proud of that decision. Big Brother Brady comes not because of Ty. He had been thinking through this and praying through this for a long time too. But it just took little Ty to give him enough courage to come on up here and say, I, I want to do that. And I know Brady knows the Lord. That has been obvious in this young man's life for a long time as well. So this morning he came up and said, I want Jesus in my heart too. And so today, these two young men, they became an eternal part of our spiritual family. And I'll tell you guys, it won't always be easy, but it'll always be the best decision you ever made, like I preached earlier. And God will always be with you. And you as a congregation need always be here for these children too. As they grow into fine young men, as they're already doing, please live godly before them that they might follow you as they follow the Lord. But God bless you guys. Anything y'all want to share? No? Well, they both want to be baptized, and they both want to be official members. So what say you? All right, Gail Glagowski, Robert Wilson are my first and second for the both of these fellas. All in favor, amen. amen. All right, come love on them before you get out of here. Y'all don't mind them coming hugging on you and stuff, do you? All right, and mom and dad can stay too if they'd like to, but we welcome you guys to our forever family and to the family at Antioch. Welcome home, guys. Proud of you. Oh, sorry to mean to pop you in the head, Ty. All right, <laughs> come on over, Sherry, Ryan. Jerry, Brian Moore have been around for a long time, a dear brother and sister in Christ, and they come today desiring to be official members here. They were members out at Bethel Hill, but just know that the Lord has led them here, and I believe that, and uh, we're going to love them in and be family for them. They've already been digging in some, and I know they're going to dig more, so do I have a motion? Brad McLam. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dalton. Dalton gets a second. All right, and I could have looked back in the choir and probably got a few too. Taylor had her hand up. That's our first and seconds. All in favor, amen. amen. All right, it's unanimous. Anything you guys would like to share, Sherry? All right, all right. Well, step right over here and let them come love on you too if you're willing. And to my right, this is Miss Carrie Suttle. Y'all know Carrie. She's been hanging around with my oldest for a while now. And she has been a, she, she's, been, yeah, there he stands really proud. But she's been a fixture around here for a while, too. She already has accepted Christ into her heart, has been baptized, but wants to be an official member of this bunch of knuckleheads, too. So do I have a motion? <laughs> Noah, I'll give Noah one. And I'm giving Seth, the brother, a second up there. All in favor, amen. amen. All right, anything you'd like to share, Sugar? All right, good enough. Y'all come love on them before you go today. Welcome them to our...
forever family and our here and now family until we get to forever. What a beautiful Mother's Day. I tell you, a lot of mamas ain't going to forget this one. God bless you moms, grandmas, ladies, all of you for all you do in putting up with us and taking care of us. And may you have a wonderful Mother's Day in every possible way. We love you. I will say I think there are some extra bookmarks over on the other side in overflow. If you'd like to grab one for someone else, some special lady in your life, please slip by there and get them. Be safe as you travel. People are crazy on the roads today, and there are a lot more cars than normal, so be safe. Glenn, would you close us in prayer this morning, and y'all come love on our new family. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you for all our uh, new brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray as we, uh, we go out, we might take your words to heart, go out, celebrate all the mothers you've blessed us with, and most importantly, uh, that all we do and say bring glory to your name. Yes, it's in Jesus' name for we're Amen. 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 Amen.